I'm going to present briefly part three of my discussion about anorexia nervosa based on my experience and some thoughts about the possible etiology in treatment based on what I know as a scientist and a medical doctor in my search of the literature. Today I want to first summarize from my previous two presentations that anorexia nervosa is a genetic disease to a certain extent but psychological factors play great part in this condition which might have also biological underpinnings. And I think one very important factor plays society in the standards that it sets for beauty for young girls. When I was a teenage girl in the 70s, thin women were considered beautiful. In being a girl, I wanted to be beautiful, to fit in, to be liked. Also girls start thinking about romantic relationships and they want to be beautiful. And at the moment then, all of the models were thin. And although I have been always thin, I wanted to be as thin as possible in order to be beautiful. It may be subconsciously I started looking at food as something which is not good because it will make me gain weight. Of course, as I discussed previously, it was also my mom that always wanted to lose weight. And I had a very incorrect perception of my outer appearance. If I look at myself, I think that I am gaining weight, I'm overweight. Or if I look at myself in the mirror, and then if I see a photograph, I look thin like a toothpick. And our parents were very loving, however they thought that it's most important not to pay attention to your outer appearance, but to study a lot. And they wanted to explain to me that I'm beautiful the way I am, but unfortunately the messages that I get from everywhere apparently left a big mark on my subconscious and I wanted to be thin. For example, my sister, she was never underweight, she never dieted. We have the same mother, she's eight years older than me. However, she always had a very healthy attitude towards food. So I think it's also personality and as I mentioned before, I have had an autoimmune chronic glomerulonephritis caused by an infection with streptococci. So I think that was very important in my case. And when I was at 20, 21 years old, I gradually thankfully overcame this condition with the constant loving reassurance of my parents and their watching of my eating. Even sometimes my mom would tell me that if I don't eat, I will have to go to the hospital in order to be fed. And I had a scale and was constantly weighing myself um, now I don't weigh myself maybe at all, I don't have a scale at home, only at work or if I go to the doctor. 
think when I was 20, 21 years old, I already had my circle of friends. Um, I had a loving family and was studying medicine, so felt more secure and therefore I gradually outlived this condition. I knew that the outer appearance is not as crucial in order for you to be a beautiful person. And that beauty is determined by the soul and the um, kind of attitude you have towards others and towards life and in your enthusiasm for life. And I think now it is wonderful that there are different models. Um, for example, in Victoria's Secret, there are thin models, there are voluptuous models, and therefore young girls and women get the message that all different sizes of women are beautiful. I really like this. I think that there have been some recent discoveries which might help in the discovering of new treatments. For example, last year I learned that scientists from Columbia University have discovered and characterized a protein, LRP2, which is a very large membrane protein involved in endocytosis, which is found in the kidney and in the brain. And they hypothesized that it could be involved in cognitive disorders in the brain and also in kidney disease. And I thought this is something very exciting. What if when you have autoimmune glomerulonephritis, this protein is affected, LRP2, in the kidney and also in the brain. Perhaps that could underlie the pathogenesis of anorexia nervosa and maybe targeting this protein or other proteins it interacts with might give a therapeutic target. I also found some other evidence in the literature for pathogenetic connection between kidney and brain, and I have included the paper on LRP2 and another abstract from a paper about common vascular changes in the kidney and in the brain in um, brain disorders of cognition. And with this, I would like to conclude my presentation for this year on anorexia nervosa. I also would like to point out that it's very important for young girls and women to be educated in high school on healthy eating. And there should be classes to specifically teach them how many calories are healthy, what kind of foods to take, and that they should not either diet too much or overeat. And so with this, thank you very much for your attention. I hope that in the future there will be new discoveries how to treat anorexia, and I think that patients in anorexia or in any other disorder are very important to help the doctors understand their condition and to design appropriate treatments. I also think that ultimately anorexia is a lack of love. 
the young women who starve themselves want to be beautiful and want to be loved and appreciated. And as I showed previously, um, oxytocin, which is the love hormone, might be useful for treatment of anorexia and it would be good to do more clinical trials with oxytocin. Thank you.